G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as I am attempting another tier maker. I have released one so far. I've got all these videos scheduled at the moment. And the first one, me ranking AFL captains, I've become acutely aware that I forgot Darcy Moore and Connor Rosie, so I do apologize profusely for that. Without getting into the nitty gritty of it, I think what happened there is sometimes when you upload to Tier Maker, the file type that you download those player images uh, all need to be converted. So I think that's where it got lost somewhere. And unfortunately with Tier Maker, if, if you upload an image and it doesn't work, it doesn't tell you. So that's on me, I apologize. But we're gonna crack straight into this one. We are gonna be ranking all the Rising Star nominees from the 2023 season. So this is gonna be divisive again, I can't wait. We're also talking about a whole stack of players here, and I've counted them, 24, one for each round. I've got everyone today, I really hope, uh, but they're all really good players, so dividing them up into four different tiers is going to be tricky. So I've got you on the screen now. We're looking at absolute top shelf, then we've got some guns, then we've got very good, and then good. So again, the names are kind of a little bit arbitrary, but we're really looking at what the tiers are and uh, trying to analyze players based on their ability. And I suppose that's probably one thing worth covering here is what are we actually rating here? Their ability right now or their long-term ability? Um, and I suppose I'm gonna lean into the second one. I'm gonna talk about how good I think these players will be over time as opposed to how good they are right now. So that's an important distinction. All right, let's crack into it. Uh, I always like to start these tier makers with one for every tier and then we can set our framework up. So who is absolutely top shelf here? Um, I'm going to say that Harry Sheasel counts as top shelf. He won the award overall, but I, either, either way, I think he's going to turn into a elite player of the comp, probably as a forward mid. I've been saying that a lot lately. I, I think that's where his future lies, and I think he could be a very good Toby Green-esque kind of forward mid. Um, then let's start with someone who is merely good. This is tricky. This is harsh. And, and I'm not going to lie. Some of this will have some ignorance behind it uh, because I don't know all these players super intimately. I think Jai Cully probably, just to start off with an easy one, I think he is probably just in the good category. I don't think he has the same degree of traits as some of these other talents. But like I said, we can move around. We can move these guys around and adjust as we go along. Genuine gun without being absolutely top tier, I'm probably going to say Van Royen. Okay, now Van Royen does look like an absolute jet, um, but that, that's why he's a gun. But is he necessarily going to be one of the best in the league in his position? I don't think so. I think he's just going to be a safe bet to be a very, very good player. Um, so that's why I have him second tier. So what's someone that is in between those two? Um, who have we got here? Maybe an Angus Sheldrick. I think he could be a very good player. He's a player I've talked up on this channel. Uh, but contextually, like when you rate him against all these other players in the Rising Star, uh, it's obviously tough competition. So I think he could still be a very good player um, in time. Now let's start whipping through these a little bit differently. Who's another absolute top shelf? I think you go Will Ashcroft. I think that's a safe bet. Just looks like it'd be an absolute gem of a midfielder long-term, potential Brownlow medalist one day. I still probably prefer Sheasel overall, but um, I don't know, it's tough because Ashcroft is, has walked into a much tougher role at Brisbane there. Either way, I think he's a top shelf player. So I don't need to get too stuck into that. Who is probably more on the genuine gun category here? Uh, I'm going to probably go with my boy Elijah Hewitt. I think, I think I'd like to think one day he'll get to top shelf, uh, but on exposed form, he's probably shown a little bit less than the others. I just think some of the things he's done at AFL level make me really sit up and take notice. So I think he's probably one of the best young talents at West Coast, that's for sure. What about the next one? We don't need to keep going tier by tier like this, but it's... Uh, it's not a bad way to do it. This is controversial. I'm tempted to put Darcy Wilmot in very good. Uh, I think he came fifth in the Rising Star. I, I looked it up. He, he got the fifth most amount of votes, but only got four votes. But I think part of what goes into this as well is the fact that he's probably more of a halfback flanker. So when I'm considering genuine guns, I think you have to be a really top tier halfback flanker to qualify as that for me in this particular video. I think he's clearly behind Van Royen and Hewitt uh, in my personal opinion. But before you think I'm too biased, let's keep talking about some other options here. Um, who probably is another good player before we start mixing it up a little bit more? Does Seamus Mitchell fit into this good category? I'm not going to lie to you. There is a little bit of ignorance here. I know he's kind of particularly played some good footy in Hawthorne sort of off a halfback flank last year. But I don't really think he has the same profile as the others in this list. And I still think you can be bottom tier in this list and still be a pretty good player. But I think comparatively... He, uh, he probably shapes as, as that fourth tier for me. But before Hawthorne fans get too aggrieved about that, I do think that Josh Weddle here 
could probably slot between these two. I'd probably, uh, I do think there's real top end potential with what I've seen from him with his athletic profile and his size and uh, ability to play defender and back, uh, sorry, midfield. I think that's probably where he goes. Um, I'm probably going to put him in gun for now because I don't think, I don't think I can put him in the same category as Sheasel and Ashcroft at this current point in time. That one's a tough one. I think that could change over time, but I think on exposed form, I'm not comfortable just putting him in top tier just yet. As for top shelf though, I do think George Wardlaw. Now this one, I, I, I realize he's probably he's probably played less games than Weddle, I know. Uh, that being said, I probably have a bit more of a longer awareness of Wardlaw, and that's why this, this sort of analysis gets tricky because I, I haven't seen all these players equally, right? Uh, but Wardlaw like obviously tracked well up into his draft year because he was a chance for West Coast pick when we had it. So I was invested in him. And then what we saw at AFL level, I think I think he shapes to be an unreal talent. So I th- I'm pretty happy putting Wardlaw in there. I'm also going to put Machido Owens in top shelf. I, I think there's real top end potential there. Really, really like this kid. Um, and 26 goals is a sort of makeshift forward last year. I do think his future is in the midfield. And I'm happy to say that I'm going to put Machido Owens in that very top two at tier. I think obviously he's shown a little bit more than say a Weddle, a Hewitt, or a, even a Van Royen, to be honest. Um, who else we got here? Mac Andrew. Where does Mac Andrew slot in this video? Possibly somewhere down here. Like, I don't know. It feels harsh. You could probably merge these two. You could merge these two categories a little bit, but I'm probably going to say Mac Andrew probably has shown me the least. I know he's kind of more of a key defender these days and finished the year very well. Oh, he did finish the year well. Now I'm sort of talking myself out of that. Maybe I will slot him up here into very good. They don't have to be even, these, these tiers, absolutely not. Um, Philippou, I'm going to put him in gun. I, I think that he, he I, I liked him in his draft year. At this point, I'm, I'm still kind of waiting to see, is he a genuine midfielder or is he kind of a more of an exciting forward? And I suppose you could say the same thing about Owens, but I just I do think there's a little bit of a gap there. I think Owens is better than Philippou, but Philippou is still the next rung down. Ruben Jinbi, I'm going to put in very good. I think there is... It feels like he's got a very high floor, but probably the, a low ceiling in my opinion. I think uh, still probably needs to work through finding the ball naturally as an on-baller and um, you know not getting led to the ball so much. Uh, but that being said, he's so tenacious and competitive that I think he's going to be a very good player regardless. But I think, I think Hewitt's the more talented of the two from a West Coast perspective. What about uh, Amos? <sighs> Tough one. Tough one. He kicks 41 goals in his second season. Mm. I'm torn between top shelf and gun, to clarify. Could he be top shelf? I'm still, I, I guess the only reason I'm, I'm hesitating a little bit is because I'm not sure if he's that key forward type or if he's a bit more of a oversized third tall, which is a weird phrase, I realize. But in terms of the way he plays structurally, does he is he ever going to be that number one forward? Um, which I do think factors into this. I do think he's probably shown more than Van Royen. If we're comp- comparing apples with apples, uh, I'll probably chuck him in top shelf. I think, I think even if he is that third tall forward, he is going to be a goal machine. And I think to achieve 41 goals in a second second year season, it's ridiculous. That's almost like 80% as good as Jack Darling's second season. So um, what about Finn Callahan here? I think probably gun. I do think there's top shelf potential. Um, but I don't think it's as, it's as obvious as some of the names I've put a, above him. Even though he's probably shown more, but he has played more. He's older, so we have to factor that in as well. I'd say probably just a gun. Um, same thing with Ollie Holland's probably in the gun category. Whoops. Gun, maybe? Yeah, happy with that. Sort of a run all day, two-way midfielder. Just very good or, or like consistent like gun. Um, but I don't think I don't think there's necessarily top shelf when you compare in some of those names above there. What about Jasper Fletcher? There's probably a little bit of ignorance here on my behalf. How like how how good is he compared to Ashcroft? I think he's a little bit behind. I'd probably put him behind some of these names here. So like I said, probably forgetting forgetting what the word says. Look at the talent there. And I would have Fletcher behind Hollands, Philippou, Weddell, Hewitt, Callahan, and Van Royen. And I'd probably put Pedler in that category too. Um, but I suppose like so much rests on this guy maybe transitioning into more of a midfielder. So if Pedler stays as an impact forward, then I think that probably keeps him a little bit lower. And he did have a great year this year, but probably, I don't know. There's always this, this high talent there, but there's also a risk of him not necessarily getting there, which I find very hard to differentiate. Um, but we need some more good players. What about Eddie Ford? Now, again, a little bit of ignorance here. I know Eddie Ford had a pretty good year. Probably starts... Close to North's best 22 for round one. 
Uh, but probably from a talent profile point of view, like I said, there's a little bit of ignorance here, but maybe a little bit behind those guys. Bailey Humphrey is an interesting one. I'm probably going to put him in gun. I think he's an exciting, dynamic player and potentially a game breaker, but I think he's probably more comparable to, to a Philippou than, say, a Sheets or Ashcroft Wardlaw, if that makes sense. Um, but potentially a very good player. Matthew Johnson, I'm a little bit undecided on. I think, I don't think anything, when you watch him play, he doesn't seem super outstanding in terms of any attributes, but you just get the feeling he could be Mundy esque in the sense that he is just good consistently. So I don't really know where to rate him. He's definitely not top shelf. I'm thinking between good and very, uh, gun and very good. I'll probably put him in very good for now because we've seen some really good signs from him, but it is pretty early days. Now we've got a couple of defenders here. This is going to be hard to, to differentiate. I think almost these guys probably do qualify both as very good. So Max Michelani. Max Michelani, again, like he's a gunner. Like I really enjoyed watching him in 2023 and came on way quicker than people expected, or than I expected anyway, um, and slotted into this, this crow side with absolutely no trouble at all. That being said, it, when you consider the position he plays as well, third tall running sort of defender, um, that factors into it for me when you're comparing some of these other talents. Like a lot of the guys I have are either key position or midfielders here or potentially midfielders. So I think that's probably the difference with Mike Alani. But he was one of the best performed, absolutely one of the best performed rising stars this year. But don't forget, that's not what we're talking about. Judd McVie. Um, yeah, I think like he was a fairly late pick and broke into the side this year, I think after Salem's injury and was very, very good. And I've highlighted him before in my videos, but where does he go here? I mean, again, sort of a smaller defender. So does he go into good? Am I being harsh there? Maybe. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh there. But uh, again, this is not an assessment of how good they are right at this moment in time. I'm sort of projecting longer term. And if, if McV becomes a very long-term good small defender, then I think I do discriminate a little bit on position for that reason. Um, if that makes sense. So again, if you're like a genuine small forward or a small defender, you're probably getting a little bit discriminated against in this video. Um, and I have favored the more on ball key position, true key position types. But I think I'm going to go with that guys, but I can't wait to hear how badly I got this wrong. I think I've got every player. So that's a really good start. Uh, but for now, I, I look forward to your input in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.